All right, guys, in this video, we're talking about lucid mistakes. This is eight things that are stopping you lucid dreaming right now. Um, because I know a lot of people, when they first start, they just there's loads of things they want to learn, loads of techniques. You read articles, you watch videos. But the chances are that if you're doing one or more of these eight things that I'm going to explain, you're not going to be able to lucid dream, and it's just not going to make sense for you. It's just always going to be that elusive thing that you read about on the internet. And you think, oh, that's really cool. I'd like to learn how to do that. But you never really actually have the experience. Number one, doing reality checks wrong. A lot of people when they first start and they learn about the fact that you need to do reality checks in order to become aware in your dreams will just be practicing them completely wrong. So here's what you do. When you do a reality check you want to make sure that you focus on the action. Let's say if it's the trying to push your finger through your palm, you focus on the physical sensation of that and then you also attach that to the solid belief that if you're in a dream you'll realize that you're dreaming. Number two, just not believing that it's possible. A huge number of people, when they first start, they just they hear about lucid dreaming and they don't really believe that they can do it. Because it sounds, when you first hear about it, it sounds a bit far-fetched, right? You know, and to be honest with you, if I hadn't had a spontaneous, like, random lucid dream before knowing what it was, I don't know if I would have believed that it's actually real. Because it's such an, ex an incredible experience and it's so hard to explain that experience to someone who's never had it. I don't know if I would have believed that it's real in the first place unless I'd had that random lucid dream, and not everyone's lucky enough to f actually experience it randomly like that. You really have to believe that it's possible, you have to trust the you know stories and experiences that other people are sharing about this stuff, uh, and you have to really believe that you can actually do that as well. Number three, and this is a big one, uh, you mistaking vivid dreams for lucid dreams. Now a lot of you, when you first start, you'll start to have obviously more interaction with your dream life, you'll start writing your dreams down, and as a result, you'll remember more details about them, and you'll start to then have more vivid dreams. And a lot of people, especially at the start, will mistake these vivid dreams for actually having lucid dreams, and they'll assume that it's just not that impressive. Because while a vivid dream is quite cool and exciting, it's nothing like a lucid dream. And I think a lot of people are getting them mixed up, and they're sort of thinking, well, my vivid dreams, you know, I'm having more vivid dreams now, maybe they're lucid dreams, and maybe they're just not really that exciting, and it's just not worth pursuing. Well, that's a mistake. You know, if you have a lucid dream, you'll know for certain that you've had one. Uh, it's a very, very stark difference to, uh, you know, a normal dream or even a vivid dream. And it's certainly very different to waking reality. It feels very much like you're uh, in a film, but it's like you're the main character and you can decide exactly what to do. But at the same time, it all feels very real. It feels like it is you. You know, if you pick a th something off the floor, you feel the weight of the object. You feel how it feels in your hands and you feel everything around you as well. It's not just like a vivid dream where you're sort of watching yourself do things, but you're not really in control of it. So don't mistake vivid dreams for lucid dreams because they're not the same thing. Number four, this is a, again a very common one. Uh, and this is where lucid dreaming tends to get mixed up with astral projection. Um, so number four is trying to have a lucid dream at the wrong time of day or night. There is a perfect time to have a lucid dream. Um, sadly, it's actually 4 to 8 in the morning, right? 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. That is the perfect time in terms of when your chemistry and the hormones in your brain and body are at the best. That is the time when they're at the optimal sort of mixture. You know, you've got the serotonin rising in your body ready to wake you up, which is responsible for like, you know, more self-awareness and energy and mental clarity. And you've also got high levels of melatonin which keeps you sedated and asleep because you've just had eight, you know, you've just had six hours of sleep or so. So you're not only very relaxed, but you're also starting to wake up your brain and your higher brain functions. And where these two things cross over, uh, you get a lot of lucid dreams. This is where your REM sleep is at its longest period um, throughout the throughout the entire night. This is where your REM sleep is the best. Whereas if you try and lucid dream as soon as you go to bed, you won't have slept for six hours, obviously, and so your melatonin levels will be fairly low your serotonin levels will be fairly low, and your REM sleep will be quite short. You're trying to have a lucid dream as soon as you go to bed is probably the worst time to do it. Although you can still do it, it will be very, very hard to even enter a lucid dream, let alone maintain a lucid state for more than a couple of seconds. Whereas if you try in the, like I said, between 4 and 8 a.m. in the morning, you're going to have a much better chance of doing it. A lot of people will try and have a lucid dream as soon as they put their head on the pillow at night, and that's just the wrong way of doing it. You know, you should focus on either interrupting your sleep in some way, whether that's the wake back to bed or the wild or something, where you set an alarm, or focus on the spontaneous techniques like the mild and the dialed, where you're, you're going to trigger your brain to become lucid at the right time of night, meaning 4 to 8 a.m. Number five, just not sleeping well enough. A lot of people, especially in today's society, interrupt their sleep or, 
restrict their sleeping quality by doing things like drinking alcohol, you know, taking stimulants, coffee, um, caffeine and other things like that. Uh, and just not sleeping or having a good sleep schedule a lot of the time. What I mean by that is if you watch films or play games until like 2 a.m. in the morning, you're just not gonna have as good a sleep as somebody who goes to bed at 10 or 11 at, in the evening and doesn't watch screens before bed. You know, if you say if you read for an hour before bed instead of watching screens, you're gonna produce more melatonin because your eyes have less blue light going into the retinas and you're just gonna sleep better. You know, that's been proven many times. There's been various studies on that that, uh, that show that's the case. You're just gonna sleep better if you do those things. And if you're trying, there's a lot of video gamers, uh, especially, who try and lucid dream because they want that similar escapism in a lucid dream. You know, you play video games to escape from reality and to distract yourself and to sort of immerse yourself in another world. So it makes sense that a lot of video gamers also want to lucid dream as well. But you can't really combine the two unless you have a good sleep pattern and healthy sleep habits. You know, you can't just play video games until 3am and then expect to just go to bed and have a lucid dream. It doesn't really work like that. You need to treat your sleep with respect and actually give your body the sleep it needs and then you can lucid dream in that sleep. Number six, trying all of the techniques at the same time. It's very tempting, and I, I was similar to this, you know, when I first started, to just learn all of the techniques and try a different one every single night just because it's so exciting and you just want to try them all. Whereas what actually happens when you do that is you sort of distract yourself and take away from you know, the success you might have had if you just tried one technique for two weeks. See, your body and brain, and especially your sleep and, and your uh, sleep habits, need time to adjust. You can't just do a wake back to bed and then the next day expect to just have a completely normal night and then the next day try another technique. Yeah, because your brain will adjust very slowly to these things. You need to give it time. So if you're doing a wake back to bed technique for one or two days in a row, it's not really gonna, you know, if you if you do have a lucid dream, that's more luck than anything, but you really need to give it like a few days in a row, like at least five days. Uh, and that's especially true with things like the wild or, you know, any, any technique really, you need to give it time. So don't try all of the techniques in the same week, you know, try and do one technique for a week or two straight and then if that hasn't worked, then change the technique. And this leads me nicely onto number nine, sorry, number seven, which is not trying more than one technique ever. So there's, there's two extremes here. On the one hand, you've got people who try every single technique within a week and fail at all of them. And on the other hand, you've got people who only try one technique and never succeed with that one technique and just give up. So really you wanna have a balance, okay? You wanna, you wanna try every single technique there is, but you don't wanna do it in the space of one or two days or weeks. You want to spread it out over the year. So you want to spend one or two weeks at least on one given technique and then move on if it hasn't worked. And what's really important with this is you need to write down as well in your dream journal, which you should be keeping, you need to write down what the techniques did, how they felt, what worked and what didn't work. Because the chances are for each person that tries this, different techniques are going to have different rates of success. Like for me, I can't really get much success with the wild technique these days, just because I prefer to lucid dream using more natural methods like the dialed or the mild. It's different for everyone, you know, some people, like some of my friends, they swear by the wild technique and that's all they use, and they can use it really well, on command even. And I can get to that point if I really try for like several weeks in a, in a row, but that's the key, you know, you really need to give it a couple of weeks in a row to get success with these techniques. So it's important to try different methods and techniques, but only if you write down how they are working and what's working for you and make sure you don't focus on only one technique and you don't focus on also trying all of them at the same time you need to have a balance and number eight sort of unrelated but a lot of people are scared of lucid dreaming so they sort of restrict themselves mentally or even subconsciously by telling themselves that when they have a lucid dream or if they even do it come close to it you know it's going to be scary it might hurt you know a lot of people are scared of sleep paralysis which is also a very key factor for lucid dreaming and I've spoken about this in other videos, but you know, people are scared. They read things on Reddit or, or forum posts. They read stories about sleep paralysis demons and crushing vibrations or whatever. And it's just, it's just not the case. There's really nothing to worry about. There's no danger with lucid dreaming in general. You know, there are some experiences like sleep paralysis, for example, which can feel scary and it can feel very real, but it's all in your mind. And if you sort of keep focused on that and stay patient, you're gonna enter a lucid dream very quickly after, after sleep paralysis, you know, it won't last for more than a couple of minutes. And even if it does, it's not really the end of the world. You're just, you're just laying there, you know, you know it's all in your mind. And you know that a lucid dream is the next stage. So why would you panic and wake yourself up or even worse, not attempt it in the first place, just because of that? 
it doesn't make any sense to me, but you know, people are scared, they read scary stories on Reddit especially, and it puts them off, so don't do that. Now hopefully this has been useful, obviously these things are what can stop you lucid dreaming, this is like the things you shouldn't do. The chances are, if you're watching this video and you're not like a regular lucid dreamer, as in you don't have more than say one lucid dream every two weeks, one or more of these eight things are probably holding you back. So try and sort of take note of them, try and work out which one it is and give it a try, try and fix it and try again. See you next time. Thanks for watching guys. This video and this channel are supported by my Patreon followers. Please consider giving just a dollar a month to support this channel or just click the links in the description. You'll find links to various Lucid Dream products, articles, techniques and tutorials. If you did enjoy this video, please click the notification bell and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Why are you still watching this? You should have clicked one of my related videos by now, right? Or subscribed or gone onto my website or something like that.